Is it the breathtaking greenery around the country, or the cheap cost of living and southern hospitality? Today, I'm unpacking why everyone is getting super stoked about moving to Ecuador. Choosing a place to move can be super tricky, but it seems to me that Ecuador is providing the right mix of just about everything. Let's dive into it, shall we? When people move to a new place, the first thing they try to look for is the view. And in that category, there's just no other place like Ecuador. This country is truly a natural wonderland, housing the most amazing spots like the Galapagos Conservancy and the Choco Rainforests. Not only that, but it even has some pretty unique flora and fauna found nowhere but in the Amazon Rainforest and Galapagos Islands. These places are so special that they've even made it onto UNESCO's World Heritage Lists. What makes the landscape truly magical, though, is that you've got jungles, coastal plains, and highlands all in one place. So it's kind of like an ideal world for people who want a taste of every season all at once. The best part about all of this is that Ecuador is packed with biodiversity and has made traveling within the country easier than ever. Plus, you've got cities like Quito and Guayaquil that are super convenient with international airports, top-notch universities, and fancy hotels and restaurants. According to the Expat Insider 2019 survey, around 86% of expats were satisfied with the weather in Ecuador. So the real question is, what's so special about the air there? Well, you see, the entire country gets 12 hours of daylight every single day of the year, and it's all thanks to it being close to the equator. This means you're constantly living in a place with eternal spring or summer vacation vibes. How cool is that? Now, if you're hanging out in Quito, the temperature is a comfortable 17 degrees Celsius on average. But if you're by the coast, it's a sweet 25 degrees Celsius. The only curveball is the rain, and that depends where you are. The fun part about all of this is that during the warmer months in Quito, you can casually strut around in your summer threads. But if the sun decides to hide behind some clouds one day, you also have to keep a backup hoodie for the cool breeze. The ever-changing weather doesn't just stop here, but it also flips drastically if you're thinking about going for high-altitude adventures. So, for people looking towards a winter getaway from the summer heat, they can always pack their cold weather gear and head up towards the north of the country. Ecuador's diverse geography has definitely made the country into a giant, fun playground. In the highlands, you can go all out with kayaking, mountain climbing, and mountain biking. And if that isn't spiking your adrenaline, you can even get up close to active volcanoes. What's cool is that it's not just the hikers who are flocking to Ecuador for adventure opportunities, but even a bunch of early retirees in the previous years are now hitting up these spots to soak in that rush from the country's rugged highlands. For those who prefer a more chill vibe though, the coastal region has got your back. They've got many businesses that'll take you whale watching and scuba diving. I mean, who wouldn't want a piece of that considering the marine life there is insanely vibrant and unique because there's not a ton of industrial stuff messing it up. It's quite cheap to live there. You'd be surprised how many people move to this country just based on how affordable life is. In fact, it's so wallet-friendly that it ranked third overall in the cost of living index of the Expat Insider 2019 survey. And when it comes to personal finances, it's no slouch either. The country ranks fifth in the personal finance index. Let's talk about housing for a sec though. You can snag a spacious flat right in the heart of Quito for way less than what you'd pay in other capital cities. And even though rent might be a tad higher in places like Cuenca, it's still super affordable. But it doesn't even stop there. Utilities, phone bills, and groceries will not put a dent in your bank account either. The icing on the cake here is that if you're looking towards experiencing the food in restaurants or at the local bar, the bill is relatively cheap, especially in the smaller towns. The only small hiccup might be fuel prices, but no worries there either. Public transportation and taxis are often dirt cheap, 
so you've got alternatives to owning a car too. Over the past decade, healthcare in Ecuador has improved so much that it's now a top spot for medical tourism. And there are some pretty awesome reasons for that. You see, they've got top-notch doctors who are highly skilled and trained in places like the United States and Argentina. These docs then came back to Ecuador to set up their own clinics. So if you're living here, you'd have world-class healthcare right at your doorstep. The cost of healthcare here is a real game changer too. Brace yourself for this one because living in Ecuador, Americans can save around 96% on healthcare compared to the United Six. Yeah, you heard me right, 96%. And the cherry on top? Ecuador offers both public and private insurance options, so you've got choices to suit your needs. I mean, just based on those options, who wouldn't want to move here? Ranking sixth in the leisure options category in the Expat Insider 2019 survey, there's no doubt Ecuador has an amazing social scene. What's cool about this social life is that it often revolves around family gatherings and religious holidays. Apart from that, Ecuador also provides its people with some fantastic festivals that always come with a burst of vibrant culture. Some of the most important holidays in Ecuador are Carnival, usually hosted in February or March, and of course, Independence Day on the 10th of August, which consists of exciting fairs, military parades, and cultural events. Let's not forget the music, though, which is usually present in other local festivals, as well as colorful costumes and typical dances. One of the most famous traditional music forms is Pasillo, which is usually played with a guitar and a rondin, which is a flute-like instrument. And when the sun goes down, the party does not stop. The nightlife in the bigger cities like Guayaquil and Quito is pretty lively too. But I'll be honest, in the smaller towns, it's a bit more low-key. For many people choosing Ecuador as their retirement home, community matters. According to recent research, 9 out of 10 expats agree that Ecuadorians are generally super friendly. The country even ranks among the top five countries worldwide for making you feel at home. What you should know, though, is that Ecuadorians have a way of being a bit indirect in their conversations. They're big on diplomacy and courtesy, so they might find blunt talk a tad bit rude. But don't worry, their nonverbal communication is pretty easy to pick up on, and once you do, the connections you form with these people are truly beautiful. Also, just like in other Spanish-speaking countries, being tight-knit with your local community is a big deal here. This means you could casually be walking down a sidewalk and hear a stranger on the street say, Buenos dias to you in the morning, or spot neighbors helping each other out with groceries while you're driving yourself to work. That's why, for a lot of people choosing to move to Ecuador, it's nice to know that they'll have a helping hand from strangers if they're ever in need. Way back in the day, Ecuador was one of those regions that were once occupied by the Aztec and Incan civilizations for thousands of years. But then, the Spanish arrived and things got a bit… well, let's just say they wiped out the Aztecs and Incas. But guess what? The history of these incredible civilizations is still all around us, especially in Ecuador. And so for all the history buffs out there, the region is like a treasure chest filled with never-ending archaeological sites. One of these gems is the Tulip Site Museum, where the pre-Incan Yumbu civilization left its mark. Then there's the Kakasqui Research Park, once home to the Quitu Kara people, and the Ingapurka Archaeological Complex. Each of these places represents the cultural wealth of human civilization as a whole and represents one of the starting points of where the region's ancestors came from. Forget learning from history books, this place has enough knowledge that could last you for years. A lot of folks might think that living in Ecuador could be a hassle due to cultural differences, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. As of right now, Ecuador has been like a magnet for retirees from all over the world, and that's why it's also become a melting pot of cultures, making it super easy to settle down here. 
On top of that, even though Spanish is the official language, you'd be surprised at how many people living there are really good at speaking English. So, at the end of the day, you don't have to stress about starting from scratch with a new language. And if on the off chance you do end up struggling to get a hold of things in the process of moving to Ecuador, you'll for sure have a built-in support system of fellow expats. Well, now it's quite obvious why people are dying to move here. The place is located right on the equator, connected to the Andes and part of the Amazonian basin. On top of that, getting all four seasons throughout the year, no wonder it's turned into the ideal retirement home. Do you think these reasons are good enough for you to be booking the next flight to Ecuador? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do me a solid and smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to know about more upcoming content. Buckle up, folks, because there is a lot I have in store for you.